Welcome back, everybody, to another Danny Phantom Review. Today we are talking about the episode Girls' Night Out. Much like the Batman the Animated Series episode of the same name, this one is about all the female villains teaming up to have, like, a night on the town. But this episode is during the day. Yeah. So Spectra, Kitty, and Ember, all villains that we've seen before, are hanging out. They're mad at their boyfriends, and they're gonna have a, a adventure out on the town in Amity Park. They don't need no man. So right off the bat, this episode's a little weird. I like the idea of having an episode focused on the female characters of the show, but the initial motivation for everything that's happening is literally just the female characters are mad at their boyfriends. It's also weird because, like, Kitty and, and Johnny13 are, like, this on-and-off couple, which I think is a really fun dynamic. It's like they're teenagers um, who are always, like, on-and-off in a relationship, but they're, like, these immortal ghosts, so they've just been, like stuck in this cycle for all eternity and i think that's like a sort of fun dynamic and idea but then they also are like yeah so ember and skulker are a thing which hasn't been established at all <laughs> in this show until this episode also they like got in a fight and stuff so they're not like so they've been dating for a little while and now they're um broken up at least temporarily which is strange it's one of those pairings that i see all the time in fan art and stuff and i forgot that it actually had any basis at all in in an episode uh, because it's it's literally hasn't even been really hinted at until this episode so that's kind of a weird thing especially when this show is normally pretty good at paying attention to continuity the other weird continuity thing in this episode is that they introduced that kitty has this new ghost power where she can blow a kiss at um, men, I guess, and they dis they get banished to somewhere. It's kind of weird, and it's mostly just a plot device for this episode so that when the main three ghosts end up in Amity Park, they can banish all the men. And now we get a girl's night out. All the girls are hanging out, and they live in a world without men, just as they always wanted, I guess. Yeah, and it's just sort of weird because it's it's just like a thing that we've never heard of before. It's just a, com a completely new th power that Kitty has for this episode so that the plot can happen, which is fine, but it's like if you're using a character that, you know, has already been established, I don't know, they could have introduced a new character if they're going to give her a random power that's just for this plot of the episode. The other funny thing about this trio of characters is that both Spectra and Ember are both voiced by Tara Strong. So like two of the three of their big female villains of this show are voiced by the same actress. Someone please make them all stop! Let's just turn up the volume. I've been watching a lot of Ben 10 recently who is also voiced by Tara Strong. And so every time that Ember spoke, I just like started picturing Ben 10. And you told Skulker he was a lousy hunter. He is, he can't even find the TV remote. And I think part of that is that to me, it seems like Tara Strong was trying to distinguish Ember and Spectra a little more. So she made Ember's voice a little bit deeper, which is good to kind of give them a little bit more distinct personalities and voices and stuff. But also if you're like me and you watch a lot of cartoons and animated shows, voice actors like Tara Strong who show up in like everything, when you're familiar with their body of work, it's very easy to like, notice when they're voicing a character and stuff and all their characters kind of have a little bit of them in in the voices that they do right so you could kind of see their whole all their different characters on like a spectrum and on this episode like although it made ember's voice a little bit more distinct from spectra's in this one it also shifts her closer to the ben tens side of the spectrum of of tara strong's voiceography um, so in my mind, it just became a Ben 10 voice. Hello, Casper High! Tell me who you are! Made some improvements. Music really adds a whole new dimension. I'm just trying to figure out how to control it better. That's all, Grandpa. Way off topic. Uh, just a weird side thing that I found interesting. So the main conceit of this episode is that all the big female villains are, have teamed up and so, and all the men are banished from the town. Um, Jack and Danny are off on a fishing trip subplot. There's like a quick little, they try to bond with each other. Skulker ends up attacking them to try to prove how 
manly he is as a hunter. Jack ends up proving that he is actually not completely worthless and and can occasionally be good at ghost fighting. They learn to appreciate each other a little more. It's a nice little B plot, but I like that it's kind of separate and that the main focus is on all the main female characters of this episode. Sam, Maddie, and Jazz. These characters really don't have a lot of screen time together, and so it's fun that this episode focuses on them and has them in a situation where they have to work together. We don't even really have that many episodes where Jazz and Maddie have that much interaction, so it's fun to see that here. I also like that they're playing with the idea again how Jazz is like, I'm part of the ghost fighting team, come on Sam, let's go save the day, and Sam's like, okay, but like, like I know you're trying to help, but like, I actually have a lot more experience in this department than you, so like, calm down, I can handle this. And then they learn to work together and stuff. It's a fun little arc with all the female characters in the show, giving them time to shine. Especially Maddie and Jazz, who are just great characters. And even though the conceit of this episode that's like, let's focus on the female characters, is like entirely based on how they're mad at men and like they want to get rid of men and stuff. So like the whole motivation for the episode is still about men in a way. We do get a lot of fun moments with these with the female characters, they get time to shine, they get time to work together and have screen time together, which they rarely do in the majority of the episodes. So even though, like, the setup for this episode is kind of like, all right, like, this is your big feminist episode and it's entirely based around men, once we get past that setup, there's a lot of really fun stuff here. Oh yeah, we even get a new song from Ember, which I think is really fun. Hey girls, hey girls, hey girls. it's girls this like musician in the show and she's had one song up to this point across the first two seasons even having multiple appearances and yet she's only had the one song so i like that we finally get another song in this episode i think that's really fun Yeah, just some other details in this one. Maddie does the Vulcan neck bench in, in, in one point. That's kind of fun. Sam ends up using the exact same Danny disguise from the previous episode, Forever Phantom, where there was the like shapeshifter going around and she was trying to throw off Danny's parents, throw them off the scent. They use the exact same disguise in this episode to try to trick Ember kitty and spectra into thinking that there's another man around. Maddie has a new gadget that ends up paying off in the end of the episode. You know, pretty standard Danny Phantom tropes, but focusing on the female human characters with no powers this time, saving the day. I think that's kind of fun. Sam even gets to use the Fenton Peeler, which is kind of cool. I don't think we've ever seen her use that before. We've seen her use lots of the other gadgets, but um, traditionally that one is more commonly used by Jazz, so I think it's fun that Sam gets to use it here. Again, Sam and Jazz working together. Overall, this episode's pretty fun. Other than some weird continuity things and how the episode kind of focuses on the female characters being obsessed with men a little bit too much, once that stuff's out of the way, the majority of this episode has some really fun dynamics. And it's definitely one of the stronger episodes of, of this season. So far, I think Forever Phantom was a little bit stronger overall, but this one was still a really good time. We got a new song from Ember. We got to see some character dynamics the, with the female characters that are rarely focused on in the show. And structurally, it's it's solid. Ember one goes home learning a lesson. It's, it's, it's a pretty good episode overall. Yeah, not a, not a bad episode. I think the first time I watched through this season, the first couple episodes really let me down in a way that I kind of like, the just let the rest of the season kind of glaze over me. But I'm pleasantly surprised with some of the episodes this season. They're not as terrible as I remember them being. So yeah, we will see you next time, continuing our journey through season three of Danny Phantom. Hey girl.